Hello. Um, while we're on the Phuket through a lens trip, we had an interaction with this amazing artist called Corey Wright. So his website's on the web, on the screen now, CoreyJWright.com. And he took us through this idea of how to tell a story in photos. And he did a five picture narrative. Um, as a visual journalist and visual storyteller um, and photographer to show how he would take you through a narrative. So what I want to do is just explain that to you today. So in a five pitch narrative, we'll look at who, what, where, why and when. And we can do that through five photographs. First thing we do is establish a setting, think about the landscapes, a wider pan, a wider image, introduce some of the characters using portraiture, um, look at humans at work, whatever the work might be. It's this dynamic, not static image. We get some details, some tighter shots that might be textures, might be surfaces. Um, and then we look at the interactions and relationships and actions between the people. So that would yet again be more of a dynamic image. Uh, Corey went to um, Burma and spent about five days working with a community. He developed a rapport with them, developed a relationship. And then after that relationship, he slowly started to introduce the camera. So he started off wearing it and just taking pictures of um, textures and details and, um, and things in the surroundings. Then he returned the next day and he started taking pictures of other things. And he just developed an understanding with the people within the community and um, his camera, which meant that it wasn't just that he was taking advantage of these people and taking these photographs. So um, after the five days, he developed lots of photos, went through his contact sheet and picked out about 15 to 20 images to describe his series, which he defines as a peaceful land, which is a really interesting um, context. That's a sense of place that he wants you to get from it. So let's read a statement. Since gaining formal independence from Britain in 1948, Burma has experienced a tumultuous period during which many of the country's ethnic minorities have suffered at the hands of the ruling military junta. The Karen are one of these minorities who have continued to fight for their autonomy and for sovereignty over their territory. While the history of conflict between the Karen and the Burmese government is complex, it is not helped by the group's religious beliefs, as many Karen are followers of Christianity. And the cultural practices differ from the Buddhist majority. For decades, there have been reports of Karen villages being attacked, tortured, and littered with landmines to prevent residents from returning. These repeated attacks have taken their toll, with many villages becoming effectively cut off, leading to economic hardship for villagers and a lack of basic services and support. Despite this, the Karen have persevered, rebuilding their villages while using an ageing arsenal, along with crude handmade landmine, landmines to protect their territory and themselves in what is described by some as the longest running civil conflict in history. What's really interesting to me is how he's described his series as a peaceful land. Well, we have this narrative of the civil conflict and these dangerous landmines. So that's, that's a very interesting um, combination that he's trying to get through to the viewer within this work. There are five images we've selected from the 16 to 20 images that you can see on the website. Please feel free to just use the link below. So let's have a look at them. Here we start with establishing um, the setting. So this is a wider shot. This is a landscape. We understand we've got something mountainous. It's green. It's lush. It feels almost a little bit cold, like the frost is rising in the morning. We've got the characters. This portrait is of somebody in a boxing ring we can see people gathered around sitting standing ready to watch and this man is facing us staring at the camera almost like we're the person he's ready to fight i really like how this has been framed and composed he's central and symmetrical within this piece and there's almost like a framing used with the trees behind him so i think that's a really cool composition here we have this idea of the humans at work. So we've got the Karen soldiers carving in this map of where they think the landmines might be. Um, it's an interesting shot. 
we have this line that leads us through. We've got this hand out of focus and this hand in focus and almost leading to this foot in the background. This one's also out of focus. Here is our focal point. Um, and we understand this relationship between these two people. Here are the landmines. So this is a his detail, this is a tighter shot. Um, you can see that he is above them. He's got these two images almost like semi-symmetrically posed, almost asymmetric, but um asymmetric sizes, but like very central, um, almost at your rule of thirds along those those two lines. Um very interesting, very almost bleak background um, and these look kind of throwaway kind of trash but yet there's very dangerous um, items so I think that's quite an interesting fascinating picture and I love the use of shadows in it as well. Here we've got these relationships as interactions um, we've got the medical supplies and um, these leading lines leading you through um, to this back corner which is out of focus so we come kind of back here we've got these two eyes leading down into this um, needle which is being lit up so it's almost, it's quite a dramatic central um, triangle here so here are some other examples by other artists um, that could also follow that five picture narrative so here's an example of a setting a establishing a setting. This is a landscape, this is a wider shot. They had a longer exposure to capture all the people that walked through Sagrada Familia. Um, so the camera was set up on a high angle to capture the whole of the floor and as it, everyone came through it, captured their path and movement through Sagrada Familia. Here we've got these kind of details, these tighter shots. This is after um, the shooting in New Zealand, how these Muslim prayer um, mats were were left with flowers around as people paid respects um, following the terrorist attack. Here we've got how we could introduce characters. So we've got the image of Greta Thunberg on the cover of Time Person of the Year. And then we've got the setup here. What I thought was really interesting about this image was how she wanted to bring in this idea of nature, this idea of empowerment. So you can see that she's lower, looking up as Greta Thunberg's looking down. So we've got that angle coming below the person as they look, oh, sorry, look up and off to the side. So that's an interesting portrait where they've used that, that view um, and how they meet your gaze. Um, to give you this message of like hope and aspiration that was really cool and also the artist wanted to give a feeling of like appropriate the idea of um, the birth of Venus with the pose and the use of water uh, this picture I think is really cool this could also be like a detail shop um, this is the step over from no man's land into North Korea. This was the first time that an American president had stepped into North Korea. This is Donald Trump about to meet Kim Jong Un. That's a really cool shot. Um, about such an important moment that isn't necessarily about these two people's facial interactions. I just think that's quite a cool relationship and action shot that someone shot. Um, and then Andrew Butler does this really cool series of humans at work, where he takes a series of images around. The world looking at humans at work. You can see there's this really cool interaction between these people um, as he's working in the window, which I thought was really cool. Um, it doesn't have to be in the same order. It can be in whatever order you think delivers your narrative in the best way. Um, or you can focus on one common theme. So, for example, it could be about the portrait. You could have a series of portraits. Here we've got Steve McCurry, famous for that Afghan girl portrait, who plays with this gaze of the viewer, central in the composition, high saturation. Um, their eyes are almost always at the top third. Um, high, saturated, highly saturated images, 
um, soft focus backgrounds. So the folk, we are fully drawn to where we need to be. We've got another example of this with Lee Jeffries, who also fills a frame with um, the figure. These are always black and white. He focused mainly on homeless people. His images started with looking at homeless people, and it, it's a really interesting conversation about rapport and respect between these two artists. Um, and is it exposure or exploitation? So that's a really cool one to look at. Um, his have a little bit more kind of fun and vibrancy to them than these portraits, despite the saturation. Um, you could look at a common colour, the artist here, whose name I will not try to pronounce, <laughs> took the city of Hoi An, the yellow city, um, and just got excited by the, the combinations of the colours of the yellow and the blue, and used that as his theme, because he found that that was possible within the place that he was. A quote that I really enjoy, a good connection and photograph must start with respect. I always put my camera away, give my full attention to the person I'm meeting so that trust can build organically. That's a really cool point. Think about how we interact with this space as we engage in it, um, as we want to take those photos. Um, here's another example of a different way of using uh, photography. So this is that idea of the introducing the characters or the people at work. So Cindy Sherman makes photographs of curated scenes so all of these images are of her um so she recasts her own identity um looking at the role of a woman and the role that women take so she plays all these characters pushes all these um film stills these fake film stills um that kind of appropriate the linguistic devices and the visual devices of um black and white cinematography um in order to understand the role of women within them and gender politics so that might be quite interesting for some of you who are interested in like uh familial relationships or the role of gender could be quite interesting for you to play with that could be also interesting for you to Maybe if you're interested in the idea of culture, this idea of playing a role could be brought in through someone like Cindy Sherman. Um, and then the last one I just want to show you was Philip Bloom, who also went to Kaoyanoi, which is where we were on the trip. And these are his series of photographs and cinematography from um, Kaoyanoi. So we've got some idea of landscapes. Here we've got someone on the bike and the um, water flow that's kind of introducing the characters um, and he's got some more detail shots in there as well so it might be quite interesting for you to have a little check out of his Kaoyanoi. So your option could be to take a five go back through to take your five um, five picture narrative look at the setting the portraits the humans at work, the details, the relationships, the setting, the characters, the humans at work, details, relationship. Maybe adjust the order, so your settings, your humans at work, your tighter shots, your characters, your relationships. Um, or it could be that you just pick one of these things, maybe just the details, maybe just relationships, maybe just the characters, just portraits. So hopefully this has inspired you as much as it's inspired me and a lot of the people that were on the trip um, in Phuket Through the Lens. If you have any more questions, please let me know and check out Corey J. Wright's website.